Bill Blair is Minister of Emergency Preparedness. Minister Blair, thanks for coming in. Of course, David, thank you. Justice Rouleau says that you hit the high bar in terms of justification for using the Emergencies Act, but he said he reached that conclusion reluctantly and reasonable people could disagree. What do you say to the people who still disagree with this? Well, frankly, when we testified before Justice Rouleau, we talked about our own uh, reluctant approach to invoking the Emergencies Act. We, we saw it for the exceptional uh, step that it, that it was. We believed it was necessary and required but I think it, it, it is entirely appropriate for the government and for Justice Rouleau to come to that conclusion with a certain amount of caution and reluctance because that's what the legislation required. He called this a failure of policing. He called it a failure of federalism. When he's talking about it being a failure of federalism, is that about Ontario because Doug Ford's government wouldn't come to the table at so many key points? No, I, th I, I think, you know, clearly the, the, it's a remarkable system of governance in, in this country in, in a cooperative uh, confederation. But the Confederation requires that all orders of government, and that's the federal government, but also provinces and territories and municipalities, all three orders of government have important authorities and responsibilities. And, and, and how we work together and, and to make sure that, that we do cooperate and, 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 and uh, communicate well together is, is, is critically important. I think that there, upon reflection, there are lots of circumstances in those events of, of last year where we could have all done better. Right, but Ontario wouldn't come to the table for the tripartite meetings you tried to set up. He calls that troubling. He says it potentially sent a signal to the people of Ottawa that they've been b abandoned by their provincial government. I mean, the testimony from their own officials seemed to imply that they thought this was a municipal federal issue and there's no role here for them. Well, and, and I think the, the tripartite table, my intention in setting that up was to, to overcome any of that reluctance. I think it's really important for all of us to come to the table, all of us to work together. We have, all of us have a responsibility to the citizens that we serve. Uh, to work together, but but I also would also reflect that during that time we were in communication with the province of Ontario, speaking to the deputy minister, speaking to the solicitor general, and I know the prime minister had a number of conversations with the premier as well. Um, you know, if, if, the we all had responsibilities there, and 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 ultimately we did come together, and and we we saw the effectiveness of when the OPP come to assist in both Windsor and and here in Ottawa, uh, the Ontario government invoked their own Emergencies Act the Friday before we did, and, and there were some important measures and 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 communications uh, around that as well, and so you know it was a very difficult set of circumstances, and upon reflection, I think you know we'll learn some lessons from this and so, work better together. So was it a failure of federalism or not? Now, yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I mean, if, I think I think what, for me it was the challenge of federalism. Again, I've, I've, you know, I used to work in a municipality and, and I've worked with provincial and federal authorities in the past. I think it is, it's incumbent upon us all to come together, to work uh, together as seamlessly as possible. Ultimately, we all have the same responsibilities mm -hmm. to keep our community safe. And, and, I, and I think that, that event reminds us of some of the challenges that we all faced. Uh, Commissioner Rulo's report I think offers some, some really solid recommendations on how we can improve in the future and we're going to look at those very, very seriously and I think all three orders of government will work on those things together. He also offered some commentary about comments made by the Prime Minister in particular going back to January 27th in which he described the protesters headed to Ottawa as a small fringe minority. Now he concedes these comments were largely taken out of context to some degree, but that this inflamed the situation and hardened the protesters' resolve. Uh, I mean, when you look at it now, I mean, what, what responsibility does the Prime Minister bear for what, ha what came to Ottawa? Well, well I understand the, the Prime Minister's remarks, but at the same time, I think, upon, again, upon reflection and saw, seeing how that went, first of all, we do very much support every Canadian's right for lawful, peaceful process to assemble, to, be, to have their voices heard, and we know many people came to Ottawa for that purpose, but there are limits to those freedoms when they begin to inf infringe upon the lives and safety and the rights of other people in this country. And, and I think it is incumbent upon us all to be, be a little bit judicious in our language, to make sure that we're not in escalating a situation, but rather de-escalating it. Um, there were, quite frankly, a, a, a small minority, as the Prime Minister has acknowledged, of, of individuals that, whose, whose attitudes and actions were very, very concerning uh, to the police and to our government. But we also recognize in among that there was an awful lot of people that were just out there because they had something to say. Right, but the Prime Minister's comments, I guess, certainly didn't de-escalate a year ago. I mean, this is January 27th. The convoy was on its way. We weren't at the point when it had descended into lawlessness and an unpeaceful protest, as Justice Rouleau calls it. So, I mean, what, what responsibility does the Prime Minister bear for this based well, on I, what Justice Rouleau has concluded? Well, I, I think Justice Rouleau's co comments, I think, is something for all of us to reflect on, not just the Prime Minister. Um, but at the same time, there was a lot, there was a great diversity of both attitudes and intentions within that crowd. There were some individuals whose intentions were very concerning to us, and I know that's what the Prime Minister was referencing in his remarks, but I think it's also incumbent upon us to learn some lessons of, of what took place and to make sure that we do assure those Canadians who just want to be heard 
that they have every right to be heard, but also to, you know, sometimes, and I, I used to do a lot of public order events in Toronto, sometimes you have to teach people the limits of lawful, peaceful protest and, and let them know this is what you can do, and, and, but, but here's where it begins to infringe upon the rights and safety of others. And I think, I think that, that work is something we'll reflect upon as right. well. So, so Justice Rouleau also says this was a failure in policing, and he says that uh, the, the policing failure at the municipal level really started with an intelligence failure. They were relying on a hodgepodge of things. They didn't assess it properly, and they underestimated what was coming. So one of his 56 recommendations, which you alluded to, is the creation of a single national intelligence coordinator for major events of national or interprovincial dimension. That seems like that would have been useful 12, 13 months ago. Is this a recommendation you agree with? Yeah, no, we, I listened to the testimony very carefully, and of course, I, I have a strong interest in, in policing um, in this country as well. Um, I, I think the, the, the proper sharing of information, it's dem dissemination, but also, um, it, it, it's not just dissemination of information. Intelligence requires analysis and insight um, and, and bringing people together. And coordination, sure that, and which coordination, was missing in all of this. And it was missing in, in this thing. And I, and I think Justice Rouleau has very clearly and, and, and some ex somewhat exhaustively detailed and articulated some of those deficiencies and failures that, that took place. I think they're, they're I, I will tell you, I work very closely right now with the city of Ottawa. We're looking really hard at security in, in the not only the parliamentary precinct, but any future events, a lot of those lessons have already been learned. You know, they're, they're being incorporated by the law enforcement community they, that saw where... Right. The, where but that, the parliamentary exists. precinct issue is very localized and specific in scope. National intelligence, this is where federalism, the challenges of federalism the challenges come in of again. Federalism. Can you even do this the way police services are structured and coordinated in this country? Is this something you're going to try to pursue? Quite honestly, we have to do this, David. This isn't a choice. And I think, I, I think Rouleau quite rightfully points out that this would be valuable and it could help us avoid a set of circumstances where this may ever become necessary again. We very much want to avoid those situations. I would work very closely with the law enforcement community. I have a lot of confidence. They see where the, the, these systems of, of information sharing and intelligence broke down and, and there is a collective effort and, and a, a, a universal will to do better on this, we'll work on it. Uh, Justice Rouleau largely said the measures, that the powers you gave yourselves under the Emergencies Act were reasonable and effective and measured with some criticism of things, including the freezing of financial assets where there was no discretion and some people were caught up like in joint checking accounts who had nothing to do with this. You know, child support payments were, were impeded because of this and there was no way to get off the list once you complied with the order to go away. I mean, did you go too far here? Was this too fast? What lessons have you learned from, from those specific challenges and what you did? Well, as, as Justice Rouleau acknowledged, we had to go fast. This was a set sure. of circumstances where, you know, we had we had hours and days to, to, to put these measures together. They were the right measures. Justice Rouleau has said the, these were appropriate, they were proportional, and they were effective. But he did point out, and, and quite rightfully, that, you know, there were some elements about this. As you say, we, we were appropriate and necessary to put people on that list where, where accounts were frozen, and not many were. But we had to build in a mechanism as well. It's certainly something we'll reflect on. But I'd also remind people that, you know, we did this because it was necessary, but we revoked these measures at the first opportunity. And when, you know, notwithstanding these measures were effective, when the emergency ended, we took, took immediate steps to, to bring this to an end. And, and those measures that, that were impacting on some Canadians and unfortunately perhaps mm -hmm. some in, individuals that, that, that it shouldn't have been impacting, we stopped it as quickly as we could. So do you feel vindicated by this? Do you feel like that this is a, a, a vindication of all of the criticism that your government faced for being too dictatorial and too far reaching and too heavy handed in dealing with this? First of all, I, I, I don't think this was in any way dictatorial. It was very much, you know, following. Well, but the, critics call it that. It's, that's not my words. Well, and, 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 you know, that's fine for critics. But, but vindication is not a word that, that, that I would embrace about this. I, I think it's, it's something upon reflection. We went into this with, you know, very seriously and with great reluctance, but understanding the, 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 the gravity of our responsibility to keep people safe. The situation in, in Ottawa, but the situation also in, in critical infrastructure at our borders really was a significant threat to, to the safety and the security of Canadians. And so we had to act. And, and so I, I've, I felt at the time, as I feel now, th this, these, this is what was required. It was necessary. We approached it with reluctance, but we, we knew we needed to do this. And, and I'm very grateful for Justice Rouleau. You know, I, he exhaustively examined every aspect of this. We had hours and he had months, but he, he, he really dove into this, listening to all those witnesses. I also reflect upon the people of Ottawa who suffered through this and, and how impactful it was. Those people whose, whose, the automotive shop floors that were shut down and people, you know, were, were fearful about their, the future of their jobs. You know, Canadians were really impacted by this. We acted to defend their, them and their rights and their safety and their security. And, 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 and that, was, in my opinion, was the right thing to do.
Okay, Bill Blair, thank you so much for your time. Thanks very much, David. A major finding there from the commissioner investigating the government's invocation of the Emergencies Act. Paul Rouleau determined the government met the threshold to do so. We're going to get reaction from the opposition on this. Blake Desjardins is an NDP MP and Glenn Motts is the vice chair of the special joint committee on the declaration of the Emergency Act. So uh, you know this subject well, <laughs> Mr. Desjardins. Mr. Motts, thanks for coming in. Uh, Glenn Motts, I'd, li I'd like to start with you. You heard the judge there that he comes to this reluctantly, but he says the government did get there. Do you now accept that they did the right thing a year ago? Actually, I, I still don't. Um, and I think uh, the judge, uh, it was very, very clear in his, in his language that, uh, you know, any other reasonable, competent individual could have come to a different conclusion based upon the fact that the evidence that he relied on or he used or that was available was not overwhelming. And, uh, you know, I, I think we have to go back to understand and appreciate that you know, how did we get here? How, how did this happen? Why, why did people come to Ottawa to protest? And, it, and very, very simply, you know, our Prime Minister Trudeau decided in August of 2021 that he was going to divide Canadians, uh, you know, with the vaccine mandates, and that expanded to include uh, people's livelihoods in a lot of different industries. And then when the commercial truckers got involved, it became a bigger issue. And, uh, you know, so no, I, I don't, I, I, you know, He's the one who, could, who needs to wear this, and it was his divisive rhetoric while the people were on their way here and while they were here uh, that just inflamed the situation beyond what it could have been. <laughs> needs to wear this, but Justice Rouleau, despite some concerns about how we got here, does say he cleared the high bar. So isn't he wearing vindication today? Isn't that well, an I, argument they can make? Well, I, I, th I think I'd be embarrassed if I was the government to think that this is a vindication by any stretch of the imagination. The fact that they actually had to invoke the act in the first place, I mean... If this was a, a Polyev government, we wouldn't have been in this spot, quite honestly. We wouldn't have been. And why is that? Because we wouldn't have been dividing Canadians on an issue that it's personal choice. And, uh, you know, the rhetoric it further inflamed people. It, it, it emboldened them. And it, it caused bitterness. And, and uh, as a leader of our country, there's no way that that is a responsible thing for, for leaders to do. I mean, you know, we talked, the, the commissioner talked about failed federalism. Well, it's failed because our leaders, the leader of this country, failed to respond well, appropriately. I think if you read the section on failed federalism, it's more about the Ontario government's refusal to come to the table and do it. But I just want to bring in Mr. Desjardins here. Blake Desjardins, did the NDP accept the high-level finding that the federal government met the threshold to invoke the act? Yeah, thanks for the question, David. And first, I just want to congratulate you on yeah, your work here. I understand you'll be the permanent host of Power and Politics, so I look forward to future discussions with you. you. But to the... Yeah, of course. But but to the question, I do accept the the findings by uh, Commissioner Rouleau. I think it's important that all Canadians take a deep reflection about what has taken place throughout the findings uh, identified by Commissioner Rouleau, because I think it's something in there that we can all learn. And of course, there was a reluctant decision by New Democrats and by the government to use these extraordinary powers. But it's these only is only this unique circumstance where these extraordinary powers were uh, made necessary because of the critical failings that Justice Rouleau found, found in our institutions. And who it's do you blame for that, failing. Mr. Desjardins? Who, who, who do the New Democrats blame for that? I know Mr. Mott says the Prime Minister wears some of that, but if you read the report, the discussions about failed federalism as a failure of policing, yep. municipal governance, and the absence, certainly here in Ottawa, of the provincial government is where he seems to be going. What's your take on that? Well, I agree. You know, I think that there's three critical aspects that have to wear this. And a true, I think, uh, a true reflection of the comments by Commissioner Rouleau identify, and you make mention of some of them, policing. We've seen at all levels, from the federal, provincial, and municipal levels, whether there was intelligence services led by federal or provincial authorities, and those authorities led by municipalities, the failure to communicate effectively between them was one of the most critical downfalls to how the situation ended up the way it was. And in addition to that, we've seen... Uh, overt and uh, direct uh, non-participation by provinces, including that of uh, Mr. Doug Ford in Ontario. Uh, Mr. Motz, you were a former police officer back, back in Medicine Hat. The, the police don't come off looking very good in this fine. I mean, well, what you're making on that, because it seems none of this even gets to the Emergencies Act point if the Ottawa police have a better plan. Yeah, I, I'm careful not to criticize uh, too heavily on, on law enforcement here, but when you look at the totality of this situation, um, the response from a coordinated effort could have been 
improved upon, and I think there's some learning here to happen with that in that regard. And uh, you know, we certainly, I think, at the committee level, uh, there will be some recommendations, much like uh, Justice Rouleau did, uh, to to address some of those shortcomings with uh, you know in the national capital. But I wonder though. I know you're going to be critical of the Prime Minister. I mean, I understand the Conservatives blame the Liberals for what happened here, and I understand the divide on, on the vaccine mandate issue and, and, and that. But the Emergencies Act presupposes that everyone up to the federal government also does their job. And when you look at this, there clearly it wasn't done by Ottawa police, and clearly, and Justice really calls it troubling, Ontario's absence here. So is it, is it, how do you reconcile that when you talk about failed federalism being an issue with the Prime Minister in his language with what we've seen cataloged quite clearly as failures by lower orders of government? Well, you know, at the, uh, at the special joint committee, we heard, um, you know, some rather disturbing testimony about, you know, um, some would call it political interference at the city level. Uh, here in Ottawa, there was infighting within the police board, yeah. within the police service. That did not aid in in uh, the whole issue of of uh, the response to this. But I mean, I, I think we have to go back to the very beginning. Why are we, why did this occur? Um, you know, what brought these people here in the first place? Uh, they wanted their government to listen to their concerns, and their government largely ignored them, and that's um, that's troubling. Like the Rouleau made it very, very clear. Listen, if there was, you know, th there were those that were fringe, a very, very, very small um, minority of those who, who were here were not here, um, how the rest of the protesters were here and the purpose for it, and the message got lost. But um, the, the, the fact that we have Canadians who, who uh, you know, are, are contributing members of our society and they feel that their government doesn't listen to them, uh, you know, that's a troubling precedent to set. Blake Desjardins, the Prime Minister, was asked about that today and he said, we need to do a better job of listening to people, but they need to do an equally better job of listening to the government and what people who support vaccine mandates and, and, don't, and, and believe in the power of vaccines, what they were saying. I mean, I don't need to tell you both, there's quite a polarization mm -hmm. and, and a divide in our politics right now that's not good for anybody. Right. I, I mean, a year after this, this and with these findings and the role disinformation and division played in this, I mean, Blake Darjeelay, what, what, what needs to happen to make sure we don't end up in a situation like this as a country again? Well, David, that's one of the most important questions that Commissioner Rouleau points out. Yeah. A majority of what he's finding here is the fact that there was influences beyond the government's control, one. In particular, the lack of regulations, laws, and safeguards that would protect regular Canadians from misinformation and disinformation. And to put in an example, he often cites uh, the work that's being taken place uh, in social media. You know, social media, he reviews three of them in particular. He talks about the use of Instagram and Facebook and, uh, you know, versus Twitter, for example, in terms of how these ideologies are being spread. And in addition to that, he also mentions the unique circumstances Canadians find themselves in during this time. It was a pandemic and people were isolated. So they weren't going out to the community barbecues. They weren't going out to their, their bingos. They weren't going out to the ski hill to talk about these things and to have that regular check-in with one another. And so we've seen the worst case scenario for Canadians, an isolated, scary time where they were forced to look into their phones or into a, into a computer screen and see information that would otherwise mislead them to maybe doing something that would otherwise damage or harm them in the future. And I think that uh, the clear words and evidence by Justice uh, Rouleau in that fact is evident and clear. And I work and I want to work with all parliamentarians, including the Conservatives, to truly see hopefully a unanimous uh, work towards the outcomes identified by, by Justice Rouleau. I'm not interested in some of the, the partisanship that I've been hearing so far. I'm interested in making sure that Canadians can be united in the work that's necessary to ensure that this never happens again. Because I agree that this was an extraordinary step that should never be taken again. It's mm -hmm. not something we come to lightly, and it needs to be addressed, and Justice Rulo gives us the answers, and I invite all parliamentarians to take that seriously and to look at the recommendations and formulate laws that will actually get those outcomes. Glenn Moss, just a quick thought on how do you move past this anger? I, I mean, I know the Prime Minister takes it a bit on the chin for some of his comments from last January, but solving it is much bigger than just that, right, than the Prime Minister dialing back some of his rhetoric. How do you just move past this in the country? Well, I think a couple of things. All par parliamentarians, and certainly this government, needs to realize that you know we need to govern govern for the people, not of the people. We need to ensure that that uh, you know people are heard and listened to. And and if you listen to many people across this country, they think the only way that this will will actually get past this and offer people hope is a change of government, a conservative government. 
Okay. All right. Well, Glenn Motz, Blake Desjardins, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you.